Back in 68, a five-year study was left largely unpublished, although it showed evidence that saturated fat and not polyunsaturated fats showed a heart protection effect. Decades later, a group of researchers have pieced together the data from that buried study and have now published the findings. And this is how we know about the infamous Minnesota coronary experiment. In 1968, doctors Ivan Franz and Ansel Keys set out to determine what role a difference in the type of dietary fat would have on heart disease. What was unique about this study was that it was a randomized double-blind study. And on top of that, the study was performed at resident hospitals, meaning people stayed put in a controlled environment for long periods of time, allowing the staff to control food intake for those participating in the study. This was going to be a massive study of this nature, including nearly 10,000 participants to achieve sufficient statistical rigor to determine an answer. The researchers separated people into one of two main groups, the control group, which consumed a higher saturated fat diet, and the intervention group, which received less saturated fat and more linoleic acid, polyunsaturated fat. Everything else about their diets was the same in terms of calories, protein, total fat, etc. And Dr. Franz and Dr. Keyes did publish a study, but they left out a lot of the data. And that data has been sitting in a dusty cabinet for decades. Okay, <laughs> I made that last part up. I don't know where it's been kept, but the researchers of this new study did recover some of the data, which was stored on these. You, of course, know what this is and wouldn't need to look it up like I did, because these ran out of favor just a few short decades ago before hard drives and SSDs and whatever else that we have now. It's a nine track tape. And if you didn't have one, you just weren't cool enough to hang out with the nine trackers like me. So after compiling the available data from a master's thesis released back in the 1980s and looking over published and unpublished raw data that they found on these uh, nine track tapes, the current researchers discovered something startling. So if we look at this data, the blue line is the intervention diet, the one with the polyunsaturated fat focus, and the red line is the saturated fat focus group. The vertical axis is the total mortality. So the higher it goes, the greater the relative mortality, not a good thing. We can see that the number of deaths was not improved by lowering saturated fat intake and focusing on linoleic acid. The discrepancy is even greater when looking at individuals over the age of 65. Clearly, the polyunsaturated fat group experienced an increased mortality compared to the control group with higher saturated fat. I mean, wow, <laughs> that's completely against the established stance. Additionally, looking at autopsies of around 150 participants after they died, just to be clear, it's not like Dr. Franz went around machine gunning people and then wondered what killed them. Uh, these people died of natural causes and then they had allowed for their body to be used for medical examination. So the researchers at the time had checked their arteries for plaque and... Although the statistics don't technically show a difference, I think that we can agree that if the cutoff point for statistical significance is 0.05 and these data show 0.059, we're comfortable saying there's a difference. That turns out to be the case. There's a slightly higher atherosclerosis score, which is the score for cardiovascular disease in the intervention group. All of this is on the back of the fact that the intervention group also experienced a 14% reduction in cholesterol. So, on the face of it, it certainly seems like a fishy situation. I mean, why would this data never get published? Well, if you were to ask a lot of others that use this study as proof that saturated fat is being demonized and we should be focusing on polyunsaturated fats, I imagine that they'd give you some version of a conspiracy. That is a compelling explanation and certainly a possibility, but I don't buy it. And here's why. This reanalysis of the Minnesota coronary experiment leaves out multiple critical points that 
if you never knew about them, might lead you to believe that the original researchers were trying to suppress scientific truth. But after you hear them, you might be inclined to agree that they might have been justified not publishing the data. Another group of researchers keen on reappraising the data found these major issues. One, when aggregating the data from the unpublished data and the master's thesis, and then putting it all together like it was done with this contemporary analysis of the Minnesota coronary experiment data, they noticed the numbers don't add up meaning the numbers changed three different times, which certainly casts doubt on how accurate the data is that the analysis was based on, and if some was lost in the retrieving process. But admittedly, the discrepancies weren't huge, so it's possible that it doesn't matter which numbers were used. Two, you know how I mentioned that the control diet and the intervention diet were the same in calories, total fat, etc.? Well, it was assumed that they were only different in the amount of saturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. But it turns out that the amount of trans fats increased. And beyond that, they inadvertently created foods that were higher in the most destructive types of trans fats. Oops. And three, and likely the most damning of all, although increasing certain trans fats intake is pretty bad, the study lost 83% of its participants throughout because although the participants were supposed to be there long term, they were also people in psychiatric hospitals and nursing homes. So they were either moved or discharged or something other. Oh, and actually, let me ask you something. And don't judge me. This question has a point, even if it sounds stupid. Do you believe that smoking cigarettes is bad for your health? Also, do you believe that being overweight is bad for your health? If you answered yes to one or both of those questions, then you'll be interested in hearing this. Although the researchers of the reanalysis did mention it, there were other associations found between mortality and smoking, as well as mortality and body weight. Now, if you said yes to those questions, you'd think that the association would be direct, meaning that if smoking increases, mortality increases, and the same for body weight. But the original data from Dr. Franz and Keyes showed better mortality outcomes from smoking and being overweight. So knowing that, and knowing what you know about health, would you trust this data from this study that has significant confounding variables, has an 83% participant attrition, the numbers don't add up, and the study shows an association between things that you've always thought were unhealthy, yet they improved life? Or would you accept that the majority of the literature points in one direction? These researchers, Dr. Franz and Keyes, weren't trying to hide evidence, but maybe saw no point in publishing shoddy science, and maybe we shouldn't jump to conclusions based on poor data. It's up to you, but I choose the latter. You know, many months ago, I released a video on a back and forth debate between two research groups on what causes us to lose body fat. Is it insulin or is it calories? It's a fascinating back and forth, which I have detailed right here. Until next time, bye.